Um, Kunal is our co-host here on this one. I've also brought in some guests. Uh, there's April, Andrea, and Amy from CalCap Properties. They are our uh, property management company on this particular opportunity, and they're really, uh, I think, the the baseline for helping us get through the due diligence process. So I'll be I'll be calling on them from time to time on this, and uh, it'll break up me talking, which is not as interesting as them talking. So I think uh, we'll dive right in. So, you know. Many of you know my story, but if, if you've been out there and you've been putting a ton of offers out, uh, holy crap, what happens when it actually gets accepted, right? What do you do, what do, you do now? And uh, sometimes, and I, I found early on in career is I spent a lot of time just trying to put offers out, but I didn't know, like, what would I actually have to do once something, somebody said yes, right? So the first thing you do is you check your math, like, did I screw up? And, uh, you know, did I just overbid something, right? So once you kind of get over that, uh, hopefully you figure out that, you know what, I, ha I have a team behind me and I've spent time building this team prior to that and everything's going to be just fine. And so uh, I know I've talked to a handful of folks just kind of starting out and again, they're just focused on underwriting, but, you know, I connected with uh, Amy via another meetup back in March of last year, well before I ever had a deal. Right. And, and I had interviewed probably about six or seven other property management companies in Phoenix, in Texas and New Mexico. And uh, I really connected with them. And, and even though I didn't have a deal to take, say, hey, this is this is what, what we need. It was more of let's get to know each other. Let's find some alignment with what we what we're trying to achieve. And so I shared our goals and we found some alignment. And so when I called on them for help, it wasn't this first time introduction of like, hey, I have a deal, we're closing, can you guys come out and help us? I think because of that time we spent to get to know each other and understand and align, it really helped with the process. And so I think if, there, if you guys have a takeaway, that's, that's one really good takeaway. Um, so I'm gonna share this and I'll pause here for a minute, but there's a lot of folks that you should have on your team. And if you haven't thought about building your team yet, you better do it if this is the space you're in, right? So, um, you know, today it's it's all about, I'm gonna highlight the property manager, but there's a lot of folks that are involved on your team. Um, one on the GP side, but also really your external team is, is critical, and not just in due diligence, but early on during the process and post-closing, you're gonna need a lot of folks to get this done. And so it's just a little bit of a mindset to think about before really diving in. Um, any input, Amy, did I miss anything? Andrea, April, just chime in on kind of a teamwork. No, piece I think or... you've got it. And and to, to Mike's point, the relationship prior to was very important. Um, we get a lot of last minute, hey, can you check this out? The LOIs do tomorrow <laughs> or this afternoon. And, um, you know, having that relationship ahead of time knowing what the bandwidth of that group is and having them know your buy box. Um, I think it helps vet deals out, understand, you know, again, hey, I'm looking at four deals. You might talk to your property manager and they'll whittle that down to one deal easily because they'll know, um, okay, yeah, you don't even want to be in that area of town for what you're looking to do. Um, so, you know, it takes a, it takes a little bit of time to, to, uh, to for the, relationship to blossom, we'll say. <laughs> that's a good point. And I actually had a, another syndicator that's working on a deal in the Southeast and it's like a 65 unit deal. Uh, and he's like, Hey, do you know any property managers that are in uh, this part of, I think it was Mississippi. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I think, let me, let me call somebody. I'm like, well, how far are you in the process? He's like, well, our DD starts next week. And I was like, Whoa, that's, that's kind of crazy. Cause it's sometimes just thought of as an, as an afterthought, right? That, hey, I got the deal in a contract. Uh, I'm going to have my team. I'm going to manage the business plan. But what you forget is the right arm, right? You're, you really can't do anything unless you have the, the right folks on the ground uh, to help you actually execute. Because unless you're going to be on site, working with tenants, fixing toilets, uh, it's, it's a different game. So just that alignment is important. Um, and what Amy just said about finding deals or maybe finding properties that uh, don't fit just today, literally, I called Andrea. Uh, there was an opportunity for an off-market deal in, in Albuquerque that I said, hey, I got two things, these two properties. What does your team know? They have boots on the ground there. What do you guys know? And it, was, uh, it wasn't just a no, it was like a hell no. You should stay away from this area. And, and so I appreciate that candor, right? Because we can go ahead and try to buy it and figure it out. But again, I'm going to lean on them to 
to execute. And if they're telling me no, then uh, I better be wise and listen and say, that, that's not a good fit. So leverage your team. All right, so this is kind of the, the couple of next slides is just the meat of everything. And really, you know, we, we had the clock starts, right? So you do the LOI, you get past the LOI. Usually it takes a week between LOI and PSA, depending on your attorney, how fast they work. But once that PSA is signed, ideally you should be communicating with what are we gonna do beforehand? What should we be doing right now versus when we actually get on site? So a lot of times there's the physical DD, but you can do a lot of due diligence well, well ahead of time. So I just talked about a couple of things. So we kind of uh, harped on this a little bit is we've underwritten it. We underwrote this, underwrote this one quite a bit. We had a budget, but we shared that with the, with the group because if you, again, I can come up with any fantastic plan, but if I'm going to lean on the team to execute, and they're going to say, whoa, that's a little bit light here. Or it's a little heavy here. Let's, let's massage this to make it work. Um, that's a critical piece. Working with your lenders, right? That you may not have the application set, but you should at least have an idea. Because if you don't have a good idea of your quote, how did you underwrite it? Um, check taxes. Uh, this was a little point of contention with this deal is uh, in New Mexico, a broker is required to provide a uh, assessed value or taxes based on the new assessed value, which is a purchase price. And so that was part of the DD files that he sent. However, New Mexico is a non-disclosure state. Okay. And so you don't necessarily, you don't That's want the city to know. What's that? Oh, sorry. I, I thought I heard somebody ask a question. Um, anyway, it, it bumped up taxes like 10 grand. And so fortunately, that's not the case. Now, it's the worst case scenario. So that's the broker doing his job. What's that? Hey, whoever's talking, you guys want to mute. Um, so that was that piece is make sure you get that. Same thing with insurance. And then check your contracts. Uh, you know, this particular deal didn't have much. There's laundry. And there is, uh, that's really it. There's no other contracts on site. So let's see here, rent comp study. So I did my own, we did our own, our team did, but we also leaned on Ryan with CalCap to help us go through the comps and say, hey, let's just make sure all the data points are there. We had a CoStar report, I had a neighborhood scout report, I had a CalCap report, and then I had the Mike Angelo pick up the phone and call every apartment complex in the area and that report, right? Because I just needed to make sure that we're not overestimating our our rent gain, our rent potential, right? That's a huge piece that uh, sometimes gets overlooked. The lease expirations versus projections. I just kind of talked about that. Um, lease audits. This is something that I am terrible at, and I don't love reading contracts and going through the rent roll. And we had an awesome team. That's exactly what was done. Uh, fortunately, we got to do that before we even got on site. So we just connected with the uh, property management place that's in place and was able to uh, send us all the leases. And so uh, April and Andrea kind of sat in Phoenix or San Antonio. I think they're all over the place, right? And we're able to go through the leases and upload that data. So that was a very helpful thing. So we knew kind of going in before we even got on site what the occupancy actually looked like what the delta was between rent roll and, and actual leases. And if there was an issue, what, what do we want to do about it? April, anything funky that stood out to you that you think would be good to share? Um, no, we were able to get access um, to all of the files because the prior management company was gracious enough to upload it so we didn't have to go through paper files or physical files. Um, some of the files were corrupted, but we were able to, because we had already established that relationship, we were able to get those files just resent over. So we did have access to all of the files and um, all of the information was there and accounted for. Yeah, using technology. So uh, there was a, another deal that we had looked at, there was all paper files. And so it literally, there was stacks of, of paper contracts and Again, uh, I wasn't part of that, but I appreciate everything that, uh, that they did. Um, let me see here. I got a few people that are having a hard time logging into this. I'm not sure why. Um, so the other thing that I want to add to that is um, the great thing on this, this uh, physical due diligence that we just completed is that uh, not only, you know, with times changing and COVID, but, you know, we're in the 20, 
2021 now, a lot of people are streaming more to that digital or e-sign or docu-sign situation. Um, as we are transitioning out complexes, we like to go digital. Um, so having the broker that was willing to have his staff scan and upload us the documents or pull them out of their database allows us to initially import that into a database upon onboard. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and yeah, I mean, he could have been a little more difficult and, and maybe not uh, do that work. We would have just had to be there on site, but that was really helpful. Um, let me see here. The other piece is bank deposits. So just making sure you have you know, what is actually going into the bank versus what's coming out of the P&L or the cash flow statement, just a little bit of alignment. And so that's just always a good check. There might be a little bit of variance, but you're not, you're looking for things that are, that are standing out. Um, and then before you get in, you even, as you're underwriting, the business plan is so critical. What, what is your plan? How long are you going to hold this thing for? Um, I think a lot of folks want to get in and, but they don't think about the exit. So, you know, in this particular case, you know, we're looking at a, about a seven year hold. And, and so we're only going to do so many things between now and then we need to align our debt to that kind of seven year window, our renovations around that window. And so that helps us think about what are we going to do when we exit? Capital required, I think also hard to understand or hard to figure out sometimes of how much am I going to re be required? This can all be done ahead of time for the majority of the piece, right? If you know that the roofs are 40 years old, you're probably gonna need a new roof, right? Just for your lender to, to give you a thumbs up, they're gonna say, hey, what's your plan for that? We were fortunate on this deal, roofs were about four years old, not too bad. Um, new swamp coolers, uh, we did run into a couple of things that they didn't probably seal a couple of the issues or a couple of the, uh, the stacks. And then uh, New Mexico gets cold. So some of the pipes that feed the swamp coolers uh, froze and broke. And so those all have to be replaced. The good news is the owner's taking care of that. Uh, by the way, Andrea, the owner's just taking care of that because they're going to have to turn it on before uh, we close. So that's a good thing for us. We don't have to deal with that expense and there'll be brand new pipes or at least all repaired before, uh, before we go live. So that's a good thing. And again, always back and forth, right? Like if you can get info from the property manager and broker on what other things could go wrong, even if you just did a drive-by, sometimes it's really easy to see we toured this property back in September and we knew the parking lot was a disaster. So we're gonna have to patch and reseal, right? I can ballpark that. I can call a few people and just give them square footage and go, okay, I need to put away 30, $40,000 just for resealing. Let me just make sure that's part of our, part of our numbers as we underwrite. Cause you'll get to a point you say, well, if I, if I double my CapEx because I totally missed something, your deal, you know, something that's maybe doing a double digit cash on cash can go away real fast, right? You can get down to single digit cash on cash. And so now you have an investor issue because you may not have enough investors attracted to a lower return. So just some things to think about. Questions, comments, complaints on that kind of last slide. I want to add something that probably you don't want to share, but I want you to share, Mike, is you sitting in the parking lot in the car in the evenings and nighttime before the physical inspection, making sure that oh, yeah. uh, it, it matches your neighborhood scout and the co-star study reports. Do you no, want to talk about that? That's good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not afraid to talk about that. That's awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Michael, my partner and I, we, we drove the property at night, right? We spent, we spent three days um, on, in, in Las Cruces and that's, that was the whole goal. You can go during the day and it's a beautiful location and all that good stuff what happens at night, right? Uh, one of our concerns was that the property wasn't lit properly. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised. Most of the property is actually fairly well lit, but there's some areas of opportunity, kind of the laundry room, the area that backs to the mountains. And is there any suspicious uh, dicey behavior, right? And we, we hung out there, we just waited, drove around and it, we're, we're happy, right? We did that two times and that was, that was a positive. So that's always a good thing to do. In contrast, a different property we looked at uh, late last year wasn't as, uh, as calm and, and um, uh, didn't put me at ease, right? I needed, I probably should have carried my gun with me uh, because it was definitely a little dicier and uh, poorly lit, not the best neighborhood. And so it just gives you, again, that peace of mind, right? As part of diligence is knowing, you know, these tenants, you're, you're, you're buying a property, not just for your, to protect your investors, but you also want to make sure your tenants are safe. And if there's an opportunity to fix that, you can do that. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That's good. I appreciate that. Absolutely. 
uh, I call it uh, Michael and uh, Michael's property camping report. That's right. That's right. We're working on a radio show, Mike and Mike. All right. Uh, hey, let's see. Hey, hey Mike. Yeah. Mike, real quick, can you can you touch on uh, the debt that you guys use on this property and how that aligned with your exit and, and your business plan? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't uh, totally going to get into that part, but happy to share a little bit. We're, we're looking at a, uh, a Freddie Mac uh, seven-year term, got a couple years of I.O. Um, we're right in the middle of the application process right now, so I don't have all of the, the pieces figured out, but that's that's how we underwrote it. We looked at a few different options. It was Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Freddie was a little more friendly on the uh, I.O. period and also the, um, the reserve requirement and the coverage ratio. So uh, that's where we are right now. And that ties pretty well to our exit. We're going to likely do like a step down on the uh, prepayment just so that we're, um, we're actually looking at yield maintenance. So it just depends on where, where we think interest rates could, could go by, by year seven. I don't know if I fully answered your question, but we can always talk offline too, if you'd like. All right, so let's go to, so this is the other piece, right? So now we've, we've gone around and how do you do it? So it's just like uh, Amy was saying earlier, it's the day LOI is due and possibly PSA next week. Get at least two weeks notice, at least, right? You got to travel there. If you're, it's in your backyard, it's another story, but you know, we had to travel there. Um, we had an issue with, we had our flights booked, uh, but that was the week that Houston and all of Texas froze over. And so all the flights got canceled. And so we had to figure out what, we're, what are we going to do? And so we just jumped in the truck and uh, April was, uh, was, was trusting enough of us to, to jump in the car with me and Michael and drive to Las Cruces for five hours. Um, but she came back in one piece, I think. So it worked out. You okay, just knew but... that Andrea and I would come after you if anything happened to her. So that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she so she was safe it was all good but we, we you know we pivoted right and that was, again it just talks it goes back to planning you got to have a plan and sometimes you have to have a backup plan when plan a fails but uh i'm going to bring up this report so you know who's going to participate there's a there's different breakdown of responsibilities and i think uh, i'll say michael and i probably did the least but what we really counted on was the team coming in to uh, do a the due diligence piece which is walking in every unit, taking pictures. And I'll tell you, like, I'm so impressed with the, the software that they used. I was supposed to bring this up earlier. I didn't. So let me show you something real quick. Hopefully you guys can still see my screen. So the, the software, and you guys can speak to it a little bit better than I can, but I'm gonna bring, just bring this is what we saw it here. So every unit, they go in, they take a picture of the uh, front door. So they have this whole checklist and it's all on their phone. So they'll, they'll type in the unit number and they'll just go through and it'll give you, this is kind of a summary, but it'll give you literally every area that could be of concern and what's the condition that it's in. So I'm going to get to the pictures because that's a lot more interesting than just looking at this stuff. So hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. Again, unit condition pictures of the floors. Um, the fortunate part, fortunate for us is all these units are classic. So really there's an opportunity to make some light improvements and um, increase the rents. But from a uh, condition of care, we, we, we thought that the tenants actually took pretty good care of the, of the property and it's they built in 82. So these boxes are pretty solid, but you can see the amount of data that, that the team collected, you know, electrical panels, got some issues with, uh, you know, maybe the, the, uh, the flooring type or the drywall damage. Uh, sometimes some of the ceilings do have some leaks. So it's actually a really good point of conversation because I couldn't remember which unit had it. So I just pulled up, I knew all the roof units are, are roof. The third story units are all C it's ABC. So it's three stories, ABC. And so I went to the third floor and I said, Hey, we have some roof leaks. And this is the reason we're asking for some help with, uh, sealing those, uh, those, those, uh, vent stacks that I mentioned previously. Right. So without having the data, without going into every unit, I can quickly pull this up and go, hey, here's here's what we got. Right. And then later on, we can go, hey, what was that one unit that had that whatever issue? Um, it's pretty easy to figure out. So uh, lots of pictures. This is an app that uh, am, I, am I incorrect on this? So as soon as you guys upload it, it's on your guys' server. Right. So anyone else on your team could look at it and go, hey, 101 a has got whatever issues. Is that is that accurate? 
Yes. Um, so usually, um, cause like I was in Las Cruces with you all. So Andrea and also Jeff from our finance department, um, they were looking in on the progress that we were making. Um, so they could say like, oh, I see you guys, the, they could say something as simple as, oh, the picture for the electrical panel was a little blurry. Can you um, hop back into that unit and retake that picture so we have a good visual of it? So yes, they can see all of the progress once it uploads from the cloud. Awesome. And then there's a summary report, which I think looks like this one. There we go. So this is awesome, guys. Um, this tells me right away, like if I need to figure out, so they, they looked at 123 angle stops. And if you don't know what an angle stop is, it's the thing that turns your water on and off underneath your sink or your toilet. So we need to repair one, right? How many blinds do we need to fix? We have some cabinet issues that need to be replaced. So I can take this um, and their team can also provide me with a number, right? Say, hey, this is a ballpark repair for each one of these items, or I can go shop it. Um, and this will help me get some scale. So if I need to go buy 15 refrigerators versus buying one, I know that in this case, I need to probably buy one because it tells me. So the amount of data that you collect is incredible, right? And you can see here, GFCI. So we have a GFCI, GFCI issue, challenge, whatever you want to say, we got to put some GFCIs in. So that's an electrical component, right? Right by the kitchen sink and in the bathroom. Okay, cool. Nothing shocking or surprising, but it's, it's data, right? And I'm a, I'm a data nerd for, for those of you that know me, but thermostats, again, some issues we can work on replacing. So um, I'll just say, again, it goes back to that partnership and having a team that knows what they're doing. This is what, this is what CalCap does. And so it makes it easy for us. We don't have, as owners to just go, hey, I, could you provide me this information? Could you get me this information? I can pull it and then we can make a decision uh, and that could make or break the deal, or it could just be a pivot and go, okay, we just need to raise more capital. Or once we're in the deal, we just know this is what we have to do, right? Whether it's tomorrow or six months from now, we have that um, information. The other thing that was great is Rod, uh, who's, who leads their construction group, uh, coordinated and brought all the contractors on site. So while I have some connections in that market, you might be in a market where you don't know anybody. Uh, I, don't have, I didn't have to think about it. He called the plumber, the roofer, the electrician and a general contractor help us with, you know, all the large miscellaneous stuff. And so they walked with us uh, and there were some times that we weren't there. So Rod understood what we needed. We explained obviously the things that are structurally required, but there's some aesthetic things that we wanted to fix. And so we were able to communicate that back and get those quotes in. Uh, we just got most of those quotes in this week. So we're, we're good to go. And it was a, a really awesome, again, coordination on that. What else? Uh, understand the dynamic. Every PM is every current PM is in a different position. We were fortunate with this one that they they intentionally they knew that the property was being sold and that they were no longer going to manage it. Uh, that was part of their exit plan too. That's not always the case. Sometimes you take over or you're looking at doing DD and the existing property management company is also fighting for a seat or fighting to stay on property. So that could create a little bit of uh, friction sometimes. But uh, I'll say. I had experience with CalCap in a different property and all very professional. And most folks want to be professional, right? You don't always get the cooperation from the other side. So that's just something that you should be aware of that you could have a dynamic with, you know, the amount of information provided or the quality of information provided. I'll say that in the nicest way. Um, Mike, question. Yeah. Yes, sir. When you, when you are reaching out to the existing PM to get the information, is this something that you are doing it or are you, is CalCap, was CalCap helping you to get the information and get the data? Both. 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 Yeah. So on the last deal, we worked uh, directly with the uh, regional head. So Andrea's counterpart uh, at the other company and just trying to coordinate through. We worked sometimes through the seller to get some of the information. Eventually we kind of realized that uh, that dynamic was better served to go through the seller because obviously the seller was very motivated to prov provide us the information as much as possible. But early on, it was just direct with between the two parties uh, and I would interject as needed, but we try to get things set up so that it was ready to go and they can kind of handle all the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah, I would questions. add I would add to that and, and Andrea probably knows even more than I do, but um, I think every trans transaction is a little different. 
couple that I've been a part of, um, the broker is very um, hands-on and helping a lot of those communications start. Um, but we're very used to disposition. We're as used to disposition as we are acquisition. So it's something that we, we really know how to work through. Um, but um, yeah, sometimes the broker will help too, depending on, again, if it's an on-market deal, they're, they're very, <laughs> they want the deal to go. So they're very helpful most of the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other, the next point is COVID. COVID put some challenges in place. Uh, we were, this particular deal really, it was at 55, 56 units. I think we were able to walk Four, two, we didn't have a key and the other three, I think had COVID. And so we couldn't get in, but um, pretty good, pretty good success rate for, in, for my, in my opinion. But that's something to be aware of, you know, hopefully that's, this will dissipate and, and maybe go away completely. But we, we just something to, to be in mindful of if, if you're doing DD and you're in the middle of this hotbed, you might not be able to get into all the units. And if you can't get into all the units, you really know what's going on. Um, and that could affect your, your buying decision, right? Um, we had, uh, we got a little creative on the last one is we had residents take pictures of, of their place and send that and upload it. It was a little bit of a hot mess, but it was an idea to try to, you know, think about how to, how to pivot. Right. Um, let's see. I think that's all I got on that. Hey, okay. Mike, I just want to add something really quick. Yeah. Um, so, you know, zooming outside of this deal, just for people who are syndicating for the first time. I will say that the service that the property management company provides in terms of due diligence is criminally underrated. Um, one of our former business partners, Rob Roswell, he wrote a book and he has this quote that says, you can't eat an elephant in a day. And it's one of my favorite quotes of all time. It basically just means you don't know what you don't know. And for people who are just don't know, you know, you, if you're a first time syndicator and you're buying a deal and you don't have the property management company doing the due diligence with experience, I mean, you probably in way over your head and the service that they provide is just unbelievable, you know, it's just ridiculous value. So I wanted to add that. It's a good plug, man. Very, very well said. Totally agree. Uh, even, even with experienced folks, and Rob was on our last deal with us, he he was really impressed with, again, not just the number of people, but the quality of execution. Um, it, it, it just can't be understated. If you don't have that, you can get a deal done, you can get it across the finish line. It's gonna be a challenge with execution, right? And that's, at the end of the day, that's what your investors, you know, we're, we're fiduciaries of our investors' money. And so if you have millions of dollars at stake and you, did not do enough diligence early on, it's going to be a struggle to hit those metrics. And, you know, a one bad deal could be the end of your business is the way we see it, right? Is, you know, if you don't, if you fall short, good luck getting money for the next deal. And so um, it's, it's important to do all the planning up front, partner with the right people and um, go from there. So uh, I love this piece because sometimes it's like, oh, I'm done underwriting. I have the deal. It's under contract. We're good to go. Numbers change, right? They absolutely will change. You're going to find things that you didn't quite know. You either underestimate, hopefully it's underestimated or you, you overestimate it and, and your numbers go, your expenses go down. It's hardly ever the case, but uh, it's, it's good if it, if it does. So adjust, right? Continuously have, you know, whether there's different versions of your Excel file, whatever it is, or have a different column and adjust those numbers and make sure it still works, right? Michael and I and our other partners were, were always bouncing off each other and going, hey, this just came in. It's another quote. It, it just jumped up 50,000, whatever the number is, are we okay, right? And again, we have a buffer, right? Plus or minus certain range. It's not so tight where we're like, oh man, one little thing will put us over, but you got to think about those, uh, that on a everyday basis to make sure the numbers still work. Um, and how does that change the business plan? Does it change the business plan, right? Um, I'll show you guys a couple of pictures of, a, of a, I think a positive surprise but it also adds CapEx to our, our deal. And that's the, uh, that's the dungeon. I'll show you guys a picture. Some of you know kind of what I'm, what I'm getting into, but any questions on, on this part thus far? Cause that's really the, the talking part of the rest of it's, I, I think cool pictures. Dallin, you got anything? All right, awesome. So post-visit, follow back up, 
pretty easy follow-up, follow-up. Um, same thing. Uh, one of the things that is not always thought about is you're in the work, like, for example, on this deal, we're going to, we're expecting to close by the end of April. We have eight lease expirations in the month of April. So the property is not under our ownership. It's still under the, the current seller. And so whatever happens in those eight leases dictates the next 12 months. And so we were pretty transparent with uh, the broker, who in this case is also the PM, but um, just, and they were very willing to work with us. And so we have a call later this week with Andrea and April and, and their PM team to go, hey, here's the leases, here's what we'd like to do. And so we get to provide our input to say, again, in this particular property, they really haven't raised rents. And so they were likely going to keep the rents at the same place. Well, if they do that, that hurts our business plan, right? Because we're planning on getting rent bumps for those eight units. And so it'll be a discussion to see, you know, what can we do with each individual scenario? Uh, but that's something you got to look at just in that, in that window, because you could get locked out of eight units for a whole year. And again, that could really hurt your, your rent growth expectations. Um, and setting up operating accounts, like we're in the middle of that right now, opening up bank accounts, uh, just to make sure once the entities are set up, you're going to need an operating account to have your funds, uh, you know, your reserves loaded into. So when the property manager takes over, you know, it's not like you have a full months of, of rental income in there, you got to have something to operate with. So put a couple months of expenses in there so that you can run the business and start doing some of those repairs and things that are going to be required. And then other things that happen really in tandem, I mentioned the loan process. So we're right in the middle of that right now. We'll have some further details, but we, we feel like we're pretty good with that. Uh, the lender's going to ask for surveys. So we're going to start doing our third party surveys. And then the, uh, the, legal, the legal SEC side, if you're raising capital, is the formations and start to uh, go, go raise money, right? To make sure you can close on the deal. So all those things, really have to happen at the same time. Um, but this is the focus is just DD on this side. So this was our awesome find. And this is not like a, a fight club cage, kind of looks like one though. So, uh, our pro so the property has three buildings. In the middle building, there's the laundry room, which you guys can see on to the right. And there's this doorway that you can see right there. That doorway leads to this opening, these two kind of funky pictures. And so it's hard to see the scale, but this is a hundred feet long and it's about 30 feet wide. And uh, we were like, what in the world is going on? So the previous owner set up these chicken coops, I call them, and they allowed tenants to store their stuff in them. And so there's a, there's a gold mine of like, I don't know, old books and things that you could find in there, but really hasn't been used. And I think the, uh, when there was repair guys on site, they were hanging out and doing stuff in the room, but uh, it, there's, it's a lot of opportunity and so what we're thinking about doing, so we didn't know anything about this, right? We're like, what can we do? This is kind of our general vision and hopefully you guys can kind of see this, but that, uh, that laundry room entrance is right up here. We think we want to turn the space around and put a laundry room on one side, have a kind of a lounge space, and then put a fitness center on the back end, a um, kind of supply room for the, for the repair guys and have that other exit. So this is about hundred feet and kind of see some renderings that I just was playing around with today. We'll have to see how much this costs. It wasn't in our original budget, but we think that if we do something like this, there's some definite value add to the tenants and it'll all be, they'll be okay with spending a little bit more on rent if they have a space like this. Uh, so while they wait, you know, they can do laundry. Currently the property is producing $0 in laundry. So we think that's a huge opportunity. We can't put them in the units. It's not quite, um, perfect for that, but we think if you can make a good space that's safe, clean, uh, lit, that they will, uh, they'll utilize it. Some exterior pictures. Again, I mentioned the asphalt parking lot. Um, roofs are in good shape. Uh, beautiful views. There's some, some, again, more asphalt damage, but all things that are, again, not, uh, not the end of the world, but some pictures from the inside. We were, we were surprised to see some, some new flooring in, in more than a few of the units. So there's some vinyl plank flooring. That's probably the way we'll go. Almost every uh, first floor had ceramic tile and new water heaters and probably about a third, some older furnaces. But again, nothing that was to the point where we're like, oh no, we, this, is a, this is a hot mess. This is another fun project. So there used to be a pool here, uh, as you can see there. 
filled up with a bunch of sand. So it could be a big sandbox or what we're thinking about is to just kind of cover up this space and put a couple of pergolas, barbecue area, maybe some turf, some pavers to just cover this area to really brighten it up. And there's no space to really hang out. Um, the reason they decided to get rid of the pool was this back is open. And so there was kind of random people coming in and using the pool. And so, and there's a lot of maintenance in New Mexico as far as regulations to have pools open. So many of the smaller facilities are just like, unless we have somebody on site, we're not even gonna try to manage the pool. So they filled it up. So we're gonna, like I said, make a, a little outdoor space again. Uh, that'll give us a little bit of, of extra amenity and we can justify a slight rent increase. Mike, there's a question from Mark. Do you plan to use a third party company for the laundry serve for the laundromats? Great question. Um, so CSC is like the national kind of laundry third party company. That's who is there now. They're not doing anything for us. Uh, that's really special. I need to explore it. I've asked CalCap and a few other folks which way it works. A lot of owners are just buying the units, uh, buying a little bit nicer units and then having the repair guys maintain them. And really the first couple of years, not a lot of maintenance other than cleaning out the vents. I, I think we're gonna lean towards owning our own and keeping all of the, the revenue. Uh, if you do have a contract, it sometimes goes, and Amy, you're on, under correct me, is it like 60, 40, right? Like 60% goes to the CSC company. Yeah, so typically depending, depending on the length of the contract, um, some people do like a five year or a 10 year, 10 year is more standard with CSC. Um, then uh, 10 year is typically like a 50, 50 split. And then uh, 60, 40 is kind of the other option. They used to give these great incentives where if we were willing to sign a five-year contract, we could do a big, huge cash payment at the beginning as an incentive to buy on with them. Uh, but since COVID, they have dismantled about two thirds of their staff and shut quite a bit of their operations down immediately come March, April, they did this from jump. So they're not doing any incentive programs anymore. Um, we have them running both ways on uh, complexes that either CalCap owns uh, and manages or also what C managers have, um, where it's kind of mixed on purchasing in uh, New Mexico, it's a little harder to find a company to buy from. So as we look into this, what we're looking at is getting something in Arizona, if we chose to buy it, finding a good wholesale option in Arizona, taking it out there. Um, and then finding somebody that can work on them, uh, making sure we have all of that lined up um, without having to renew a contract. Awesome, that's good. Good, court. great question, great question. At the end of the day, you know, we look at it as what's, what's additional income we can make. And if we split it, if they offer a decent incentive, if we split it, uh, we don't have any burden or liability. We still get some of the income. If we buy new units and we manage it, ourselves a little more labor up front but you know uh it's 100 percent of the revenue so we're going to do a little bit of a poll for we're going to ask survey our, our tenant base and before we just go out and do it i think we want to get a good idea of would there be usage and um you know we'll kind of base it on that and same thing with that whole space is if we do the laundry room we might end up doing it in phases where it's you know possibly laundry room first and um there we go. maybe we don't do the lounge not this we definitely want to get rid of this. Um, we might even do storage. That's the other. That's the other idea. Amy had that idea of like possibly putting in some, whether it's an Amazon locker or something like that. With technology and everything going, most folks still working from home. You know, having stuff delivered is is an important piece. And so, you know, anyone that lives in an apartment, it's a little more more challenging to receive packages. So, there isn't a leasing office in this space. So that was the other intent is to create a leasing space, um, not, not just for not for packages necessarily, but for folks that come in and, and want to tour the property, so, or have challenges, but so, that's good. So definitely not an underground fight club, right? That's not happening. Well, there is a flex space, who know, possibly that we could maybe do a fight club in this location, but, uh, you know, the first rule is you don't talk about it. Either. All right. All right. Let's see here. So that's, I think that's it. Oh, man, go back. As if we didn't talk about CalCap enough, here's some more information. They are awesome. Uh, they, they have a very good footprint in the Southwest and they really, the, the thing that aligned, I aligned with, we aligned with was core values. Their people are phenomenal. Um, I bug the crap out of them all the time and, and they're always uh, smiling and, and handling stuff. So 
So I'll say thank you so much. But uh, if, if any of you are, are getting ready to buy a property and it's you know 50 units and up, right? It's kind of the, the, the baseline. Yes, sorry. No, I no was worries. busy texting Todd, sorry. <laughs> That's all good. That's all, do what you gotta do. Uh, so yeah, 50 units and up. Yes. But again, they're in New Mexico, Texas and in uh, Arizona, of course. Yeah, reach out, even if it's not 50, um, I've got some good referral um, information um, for other companies and you know I don't have a problem talking through needs so um, give me a shout and actually I'll put my I'll put my information in here in the chat if that that'll probably help um, perfect that's uh, we actually got through that pretty quick questions comments complaints anything feedback is a gift. Great presentation, I'll say. I do have a question. Yeah. I'm actually uh, um, a real estate agent for Keller Williams. Hey, Robert. And uh, I've got a, I've got uh, some guys that uh, have a, a bunch of smaller buildings in Scottsdale, and they're thinking about. Um, their biggest problem is property management. They don't live in the state. I had made the suggestion instead of keeping the three separate buildings they had, consolidate that along with some money that's coming in that's got to go through a 1031 exchange and buy one property. They've asked for some recommendations on property management companies. And the ones that I came across are also brokers. And I'm not real comfortable with this because the total deal is probably about 30 million bucks. Um, I know I could probably, I, I, I'm from New Jersey. I, I owned a firm for 30 years uh, outside of New York City and I dealt with smaller multifamilies. And um, you know, the, 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 the money wasn't uh, quite as big as a, a deal is gonna be like this, but I, I, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to secure and what the property management companies do here. There, it wasn't an issue because they, they uh, wouldn't list the properties. In New Jersey, they didn't have to be licensed as a realtor to be a property management. So that's a big difference between them and Arizona. Pretty much everybody at the broker is gonna be a property manager. Yeah, that's a, well, I think it's a good problem to have. Just need to figure out number one, what what kind of property do you want to buy or do they want to buy, right? Uh, do they? I assume they want to stay in Phoenix and buy something larger, like. They that, know. That, exactly, yeah. yeah, they know exactly what they want, where they want it. They're very very precise. That's not the problem because the these guys are experienced. Um, walking them through the deals and the problem. My only concern is if I send them to a property management company, I don't want them taking my thirty million dollar deal. Yeah, well, that that won't happen with us. That's for sure. We are strictly property management. Yeah, so um, that is safe with us. Um, and I do run in that into that um, with the smaller deals where you have some of that, um, but a lot of the bigger deals you don't. So yeah, reach out to me. Um, my my info's in the chat, and we can talk through it. Um, but yeah, You're, you won't you won't see us doing that. So okay, are you are you Amy? I am. Okay, so I'll give you a call tomorrow, Amy. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, they'll take care of you, and I think that's the right size of property that they manage. It'll fit in their, fit in their wheelhouse perfectly. Mm -hmm. What else? Thanks for asking the question, Robert. Appreciate it. Michael Wagman, Michael Harwood, Sean, any questions? Some of you guys never turned your cameras on, so we don't even know what you look like. Let's see here. <laughs> Oh, Mark, Mark is driving, so I won't give him a hard time. That's okay. Hey, Nick, I know what Omar looks like. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mike, uh, real quick, something that I, I noticed before you even stated the year of that property, yeah. I was like, that's probably an 82 or 83 build. Yeah. Um, literally looking at the photos of your, of your deal, um, oh, yeah. I, I kid you not, same exact finishes in our property that was built in 82. <laughs> Um, and this one is in Arizona. We were just down at it yesterday. Um, so it, that, that, that brings up a good point. The reason I bring that up is because once you get familiar with years and types of properties, 
New Mexico and Arizona construction is very similar. So you could typically go in and without seeing every single unit, have an idea of what's inside, what's inside the walls, what, what types of finishes are going to be there. Um, and I'm fortunate enough, one of my business partners is a general contractor and we had the experience. We looked at a property in Phoenix and uh, we drove separate. I was going to meet him there. He got there about five minutes before me. And as I pull up, he's already pulling out and he's shaking his head. He's like, nope, not worth it. Let's go on. And uh, come to find out one of our colleagues out of state uh, submitted an LOI, got the offer accepted and they toured the property. And I, I think, I actually think CalCap was involved on that one as well. So they went out there, did the whole due diligence, all that. And they, they decided to back out. Um, so it's good to have somebody on your team, a contractor or a property manager. What took us five minutes, unfortunately took them a day of, of work and really digging in. Um, so it's just really important to have those people on your team and the property managers I think Amy was saying people are reaching out almost when it's too late. You need to get those people, start those conversations sooner than later. Yeah. Well said. Well, imagine if you bought the property, right. Then you'd be potentially in some hot water and, you know, age to your point, right. Sixties properties, they have chillers, not a bad thing. Just one of those things you got to be aware of. There's some uh, electrical panels that were older that are no, you know, have issues. So you might have a property. It shouldn't discourage you from buying it. You should just be aware. Uh, some of the late nineties had some PEX issues, right. With, with a certain brand that's, that's no longer in business. And so they had some in-wall issues, just things in certain markets, those, there was more of it or not, but having familiarity, familiarity with it is a huge part. And um, yeah, well said. Now, out of curiosity, did you guys look into the plumbing in this one? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. You asked that. So it's all copper. The, the challenge was scoping drains is this property sits up on a hill and there's not a single clean out across the whole thing. So we just green lighted today. We still have another week on, on DD. So we're going to actually go to the bottom units on the farthest end of the buildings and take the toilets out and scope the line through the toilets in a, in a unit. So uh, once we take over the property, we'll probably put some clean outs in. But for right now, to make sure the main line's in good shape, we're going to go that route. So a little more aggressive. It's going to cost us money. But you know, my cost is a couple grand versus 30,000 if we find a cracked main, main line, right? So. But at least it's copper. It doesn't sound like you have any polybutylene in there. Yeah, no, no poly, no poly. Do you have any issue with aluminum wiring in properties from the 60s out here? In Albuquerque, I know. I don't know about Phoenix. Yeah, there was some aluminum my wiring and some of the panels were uh, Zinsco. Zinsco. Uh, federated panels, right? Federated was the other one, yeah. Federated, yeah. I, th I thought Zinsco was the other one. But, yeah. the university I have a property yeah. in Phoenix Zinco that, um, yeah, I have a property in Phoenix that is built in the mid 60s. And uh, during due diligence on the transition of that one, there was no um, aluminum wiring. Um, cause of course that's initially what they look for. So I think I've seen three or four transitions during due diligences, uh, and I've yet to see it come up in Arizona. Hey, this is, Mike, uh, we have, oh. Mike, we have a, we have a question or a comment. I'm not sure. Mark, he made a comment, secure written agreements in advance. Mark, you want to unmute yourself and probably if it's a comment. Or is a question? Yeah, that was, that was when he was asking earlier. I put down um, and when he was asking about, you know, being concerned about the realtors and property managers and all that. And I think you can get uh, written agreements uh, as to who's representing who in advance of making that contact. He should be able to protect himself. So this was this was for this was for Robert, right? So it was for the Remax. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. Robert. Or, Mark, Mark, you also a real estate agent, right, Mark? Yeah, I'm a broker in California. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. What's Keller Williams doesn't say though. <laughs> Was there? Guys, can you yeah. hear me, guys? Yep. Uh, good evening, everybody. I've been a broker here in Phoenix for a long time, and um, I haven't come across aluminum in a while. But the solution is pigtails. So, if uh, electricians will know what that is, yeah. So, but but 
Yeah, I haven't. I probably haven't had to deal with that in at least a decade. A lot of it was replaced over the years. Correct. Good. Good point. Yeah. Awesome, gentlemen. If I could jump in, uh, from the perspective of insurance, a lot of carriers are requiring uh, upgrades to the Zinco and the Fedco uh, paneling and the the electricity. So remediation has become a big topic um, versus uh, uh, a remediation with respect to uh, replacement and not uh, uh, doing the pigtails or the, I believe, the Copeland method or uh, there's another one out there. I don't remember. Omar, are you saying that remediation or replacement is mandated by insurance prior to close up escrow if this is discovered? So it can be, depending on the age of the um, of the location and property, they may stipulate for um, uh, the remediation or the replacement uh, as a contingency or subject to in the contract. Gotcha. Yeah, and the difference between pigtails and uh replacement will be a huge cost and uh, yeah i was gonna say i don't i don't know if enough about it to speak educated but uh omar from from your perspective that's omar's with garzelli group by the way so he provides uh insurance on property so if you need insurance uh check with omar but he's pretty well versed in this in this side are you seeing it as more of a coverage issue from not just insurance but also lender requirements does that ever come up or is it kind of two different things um i would say it's two different things um and you're seeing it more on the side of the carrier okay. um and um yeah from the carriers um and uh mind you uh if if, if you have good relationships with the underwriting team um all carriers are uh understanding and uh, you know they can uh, work with you on putting a improvement plan, and it can be agreed upon because uh, the expense can get so astronomical when it comes to replacement of the electrical. That uh, you know, depending if it's 150 units, I've had uh, carriers just ask for 30 units in the first year, possible 40 or 50 in the second year, and they work with you. So. Um, don't let it be a deal breaker. Just ensure to communicate that with your broker. Omar, uh, let me ask you a question. So I'm going to use this property as an example right now. Mike here is working with CalCap and they're doing everything from uh, lease audits to physical inspections and plumbing and HVAC and whatnot, right? But he has received a code from you. I'm just making it up. He has received a code from you for insurance services. Um, at what point Let's say they discovered, I don't know, in this property, aluminum wiring, right? How would you find out and when would you find out about this? Can you guys hear me? So yep. depending on the carrier, yes, sorry, I was just uh, giving it a moment. Depending on the carrier, um, you're going to have a uh, inspection on the property. Uh, a carrier will send their own individual out. So um, it possibly may be discovered at uh, the inspection point. And then um, the carrier will send out a uh, recommendation or a must fix. Gotcha. So, so assuming, like, say, for this property, now, Mike has a. I'm sorry. Uh, he has a, let's right. say 45 DD right. period, 45 day DD period. So I'm assuming that the carrier will, will come in within those 45 days, correct? Uh, no, they will, uh, sure. they will come in 30 days or within 30 days after you close. I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. because prior to they're, they're, uh, they are, uh, they have no responsibility. I see. Unless we are, unless it is discovered and shared with 
your broker, where then I have the responsibility to share that with the carrier. And then we begin the process of, you know, what type of program or plan uh, will, you know, the buying entity have in place to uh, remedy uh, the, the electrical or whatever the uh, safety issue may be. Uh, balusters, you know, spaced out too much, and we can go down the list of what may be requested of you. I see, I see. The intent of my question was, at what point will, let's say in this property, Mike include that cost in his underwriting? It would, uh, I'll speak to that because ideally during our DD, when we had, we had an electrical inspection on this and everything checked out fine, we, we should have identified it at that point. I, I could be wrong. I would think that the inspector on behalf of the carrier would likely find similar findings to our electrician, right? If they find something totally different, I, that's, that's an issue, I guess. But um, if we were thorough on our end with our contractors, we should have identified those things. And then it, it would be our job to communicate that to, uh, to those that need to know. And, and we'll make the adjustment from there. Gotcha. Yeah. Good question though. What else? Michael, Ryan, you got anything? Nick, any questions, comments? Cool. All right, well, we are, uh, look at that, right on time, perfect. I, I would like to thank everybody for, I love this last part, by the way. It, it's a great dialogue because we have experts and experience uh, in the group and the goal is for you not to listen to me I have the least experience in the room. So I, I want everyone to contribute and feel free to share what you know. Um, the group hopefully will benefit from everyone uh, chiming in and, and sharing those experiences and knowledge. So, so thank you for that. Uh, our next event will be April 7th, uh, which is crazy to say. It's uh, the first Wednesday of, of every month. So April 7th, we'll work on the, on the topic. Thank you again for chiming in. There is a recording of this. So um, if you were picking your nose again during the call, I got you recorded and I will send that out to everybody. So thanks again, everyone, and have a good night. Thank you, Mike. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Bye.